Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today we're going to talk about overriding style values in WPF. We'll start with a very simple example here. We've got just one text block on our form inside of a stack panel, and we're going to go ahead and create an implicit style for this text block. So in order to do that, I'm going to just say style and set the target type equal to text block, and I won't give my style a key. When I just give it a target type, that'll make it an implicit style, which means it'll be applied to all text blocks in my application. So I'm going to give this style one setter, and I'm going to set the property called font size. Since I've given my style a target type of text block, then I'm getting IntelliSense when I'm setting the properties. So when I come in here and I say property equals, the list of properties that IntelliSense shows me are those just available to the text block element. So I'll go ahead and set that font size, and I'm going to set the value equal to, uh, let's say, 25. And I need to put this style block inside of a resources section here. That's why I'm getting those underlines in Visual Studio telling me that the style with a key can't live outside of a resources section. So let me create a resources section for my window. Now if I go ahead and run this application, what you'll see is my text block has been applied that style implicitly. I don't have to specify the key directly here because I've specified just a target type on my style, which means apply this style to all text blocks in my application. And this style is only using the font size setter, which you can see here is setting it to 25. Now, if I go ahead and put another text block on my form, and let's say that this one says hello again, and run the application again, you'll notice that both text blocks get applied the same style again because I'm using an implicit style here. So all my text blocks are going to have that default style. There may be cases where I want certain text blocks to not inherit the default settings and I want to override those settings with a local property value. So if I come into the text block directly and set the font size to something different, say 15, that's going to override any font size setting that's coming from the style that the text block is given. So now when I run the application, what you'll notice is that the first text block still gets the implicit style here with a font size of 25, and the second text block is overriding that property and setting it to font size 15. When I override a specific property in the text block by setting the font size here, for instance, equal to 15, that doesn't replace the entire style that's applied to the text block. It only overrides those properties that I've specified explicitly on the element. So if I'm to go up to my style here and add a new setter, and I'm going to say property, and we'll say this time that the font weight is equal to bold. And now if I go ahead and run this, you'll notice that both of my text blocks will get the bold property applied to them, even though the one, the second text block there, hello again, is overriding the font size to 15. Now if I wanted to say have the, the font weight on this one to also uh, be normal instead of bold, then I can override that directly. And I can say that we'll do this in, say, normal. Now you'll notice that I've overridden both properties from the implicit style. And we can pick and choose which properties we like to override. So maybe I want bold on the second one in a font size of 15, but I don't want bold on the first one. So I'll override font weight on my first text block and font size on my second text block. And the other property in each one of these that isn't being explicitly set will get inherited from the base style here, from the implicit style. And you can see now I'm getting on the first one I get no bold, but I get the font size setting. And on the second one, I get bold from the implicit style, but I don't get the font size setting because I've explicitly specified a local property value that will override. And this works the same for in, uh, explicit styles as well as opposed to implicit styles. So we've been talking about an implicit style with just a target type specified. But if we were to have a second style here that we actually gave a key, and we said the X key is equal to text block style, and in here we put our own setter and we set, say, the foreground and we set that equal to uh, green. Now if we create a third text block and we say hello one more time and we set its style attribute explicitly to equal the named style that we have above, so this is going to be text block style. Now our third text block, you'll see when we run it, is going to get a foreground of green, and it's not going to get any of the implicit styles that are specified. 
So when we specify an explicit style, we're only going to get the property set in that style. If we use an implicit style, then we'll get the, the property set from the implicit setter. And again, on, on this one directly, we can change the foreground to say blue, and we may create a second text block, and we'll, we'll leave the foreground alone, but we'll use the same explicit style. Now when we run this, what you'll notice is that the first text block here is showing in blue because it's overriding that style directly with an explicit setting on the element. And the second text block is getting the style from the named style here and setting that foreground to green. So what we've shown here is that using a local property setter on an element, for instance, setting font weight or font size explicitly will override any values that are set in the style that's applied to the given element. So again, on this first text block, the style that's applied to it is going to be the implicit style for text block that we've specified here. And we've specified that just by listing a target type and not listing a key. And in this style, we're setting the font size and the font weight to some value. And on the first text block, we're going to get the font size equal to 25, but we're going to override the font weight property and set it back to normal. And we're going to do that by explicitly specifying a local property setter. And on the second text block, we're going to do just the opposite. We're going to explicitly set the font size, but we're going to take the bold font weight setting from the implicit style. And this works the same way on, on explicit styles or styles with keys. So for instance, we have a style here that specifies a target type and a key, and it has one setter for the foreground of green. And we can override that if we'd like with a direct property setter here on the element itself. And again, we'll run this so we can see it all together. Okay, and that's all for how styles and local property overrides work.